Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Thanks for joining me today on Soap Queen TV. I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing, happy, mm, smells so good berry soap that uses real Tessa silk fibers. Tessa silk fibers are real silk from silkworms. Brambleberry silk is cruelty free. It is silk fibers that have been collected from the cocoons after the worms have left their cocoons. Tessa silk helps to give soap a smooth, rich, and creamy lather that some may call silky. Now, if you haven't made cold processed soap before, please stop right now and watch the first four episodes of Soap Queen TV or read the couple first chapters of my book, Soap Crafting. This recipe uses some advanced soap making techniques that you will need a few batches under your belt before attempting. Let's go over how to use Tessa silk fibers, but before that, we need to suit up for safety. Before working with lye or any cold process soap recipe, it's important that you get your children and your pets into another room. Make sure you are wearing long sleeves and long pants and closed toed shoes, and that the room you're working in is well ventilated. Finally, gloves are essential as well as goggles. Tessa silk fibers are very soft and fine. Take a few pinches, in this case just three for this recipe, and add them to your extremely hot lye water mixture. Then stir. Notice how some of them are dissolving right away, but still some of them are kind of clumping up. Take those and just break them into smaller strands. Now stir. Looks like they are all mixed in. When added to cold process soap, I I think you'll really like how this makes your soap lather feel. Set your lye water aside and allow it to cool while we prep the other ingredients. Today's fragrance is a blend of black raspberry vanilla from Brambleberry.com, strawberry and juniper sage fragrance oil. The black raspberry vanilla and strawberry mix together to form a great sweet berry, but that juniper sage really slips in there to give a great base note that takes it to a much more sophisticated blend level. Next, it's time to prepare our wooden mold. This is the tall loaf mold from Brambleberry.com and it does need to be lined with parchment paper, shiny side out. If you use wax paper, there is a possibility that the wax will melt off into your soap. For more tips on lining your soap mold, check out SoapQueen.com. Now it's time to prep our colorants. Put one teaspoon of titanium dioxide, ultramarine lavender, radiant plum colorant from Brambleberry.com, ultramarine blue pigment, chrome green oxide, and black oxide into individual containers. Now add one tablespoon of lightweight oil to each of those containers. A lightweight oil is an oil like sweet almond oil or avocado oil. Take a mini mixer and just blend. If you don't have a mini mixer, you can use a whisk. Notice I'm going from lightest to darkest in color. This is because I don't want to have to wash my mini mixer in between colors. If you'd like more information on how to mix colorants, there's a Soap Queen TV short for that. Just one more step before we can get started making soap. It's time to add your sodium lactate to your lye water. Sodium lactate is an optional step. You don't need to add this in order to make your soap perfect, but a hardening process of your soap and make your soap slightly more shiny. Sodium lactate is the sodium salt of lactic acid. It's commonly used as a food preservative. The usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oils. So for this recipe, we're adding three teaspoons. Your oils and lye water about 120 degrees. Pour the lye water slowly and gently down the shaft of the stick blender. Pulse until you get a very thin and light trace. Now, separate the batch into four even containers. I like to use the easy pour containers from Brambleberry.com. To the first container, add one teaspoon of the dispersed chrome green oxide. To the next container, add one teaspoon of radiant plum and one half teaspoon of ultramarine lavender oxide. 
This next container takes three colorants, 1.5 teaspoons of the dispersed ultramarine lavender, one fourth teaspoon of the ultramarine blue, and then one sixteenth of a teaspoon, or just about three or four drops of that dispersed black oxide. Finally, into the last container, add all of that titanium dioxide, and now whisk in order of lightest to darkest colorants to mix thoroughly. Evenly divide your fragrance blend between the four containers and whisk in. Now it's time to start making our soap. Add about one third of the white to the very bottom of your lined soap mold. And then it's time to start swirling in different colors. Take whatever color you want, in this case I'm going to be using the purple colorant, and start to pour it from about six to eight inches up. The key is to get it to break through that first colorant. Now take your next color, green for me, and pour from about six to eight inches up. And finally, the last color, the pink. Now repeat this all over again. You should have enough soap to do about three passes of each colorant. Save a little bit of the colorant for a top swirl design. It's key that you pour from at least six to eight inches up. That breakthrough is incredibly important for this drop swirl technique. Now for our very last thing, go ahead and just kind of tap, 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 and then try and cover your soap with as much of that white soap that's left. Okay. And then down the middle of that soap, I just want you to lay a thick line of green soap. And just try and make it as straight as you can, all right? Now on either side of that green soap, do a thick line of purple and a thick line of that pink. All right, tap that mold firmly, kind of wiggle it, make sure all those lines are as even as smooth as possible. Insert your skewer or chopstick just about a quarter of an inch into that soap. You don't want to get the under swirl, just this top part, and then start slowly working in a large S-shaped curve widthwise down the length of the mold. Wow, that is so pretty. I love the contrasting colors. We have a, one final thing to do before you cover the soap and insulate it, and that spray the top of the soap with 99% rubbing alcohol. This is an optional step, but will prevent soda ash. Allow the soap to harden for three to four days. Now, I did make some soap this week for you. That way we could cut this and show you how to unmold on camera. So take your mold and just slowly pull this bottom guy out. Now, if yours is sticking, it might be because some of your soap has just leaked a little bit. Use some elbow grease to get that out. Once the bottom is out, go ahead and put the entire mold on its side and then gently and slowly push from the bottom. You may have to push pretty hard if your soap has leaked at all. Push, 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 push that soap out. Now pull the sides of our parchment paper down. Take a non-serrated knife, exhale and push down and let's see that first cut. Oh. Gorgeous! I love how these swirls have just dropped down so perfectly. You can really see why that six to eight inches is so important for this design to work. Cut the rest of your soap, place it in a cool and dry place to cure for four to six weeks, and then it's ready to package and then give away or sell. Until next time, happy soaping!